What's up guys and welcome to another episode of The Good, The Bold, The Honest. You may be wondering, where's Martin been for the past month? Or maybe you didn't ask yourself that. But uh, just so you know, um, I traveled to Kenya and Tanzania back in April uh, for work and I really got some good footage of stuff that I wanted to show you guys like um, climbing that little mountain. I'm doing a vlog about travel. I'm really excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about traveling. It's one of my favorite things to do. And recording my whole trip on Snapchat hoping to make it into a video. Thank you Tanzania. It was a great time. Uh, and it was during that time that I, 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 I found out the news about my friend passing away. Um, after that I got home and I spent about a week, maybe a week and a half before I had to leave back to Africa. Uh, on Mother's Day and there it was nothing but work 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 it all started in Benin um, from there I went through Togo to Ghana where I spent some days uh, from there I went to South Africa where you guys saw the video I hope you saw the video of me going to a rugby game and then from there we went to Zambia where I got to experience the Victoria Falls um, I know I have been a little inconsistent with my videos, uh, but I will go and I, I will go ahead and upload those videos so you not only can see them, but you can be inspired by them and hopefully do something crazy one day like go to Victoria Falls or visit Africa. So this is what I want to share with you this week, Father's Day. The day that people write you cards that make no sense, like this one. Or this one. Well done. Moving on from that. Wait, hold on, one more, one more. What does this even mean? Whatever. Father's Day has become a very important day for me in my life. Not because I want to get gifts or because I want the attention. But because it's a day that I truly get to celebrate knowing what it truly means. Let me tell you, um, as you all know, I have a one-year-old. Her name is Madison. Okay? Um, she was never in my plans. And before you judge me, before you say, oh, Martin, you're weird. No. Hear me out. When I got married, I told Marielle, I don't want to have kids maybe for a good five or six years. To what she said, something else. And she convinced me otherwise. She showed me the good out of everything that has to be with a father. Um, and when I when I found out that Marielle was pregnant, um, this is the first thing that came to my mind. Crap, am I ready for this? And then the second question that came into my mind after that was, I hope it's not a girl. I don't know why. But throughout those times, before Madison was born, I, I never had a, a good or deep interaction with a baby. Nonetheless, without adult, adult supervision around me, I mean, I never changed diapers, I never did all that, all this stuff. But then, as time progressed and as when Madison was born, I learned that it's something that comes within me, something that came within me to be a father. So if you're watching this and you're already a father, or if you're looking in the future, you're married, you're thinking about having kids, or you're not nowhere, nowhere close to that, let me tell you something. You are designed by your father in heaven to be a father on earth. Now, the fact that you're designed for that does not mean that you're going to turn out to be a good parent. Let me explain. If I have a really expensive camera, no matter how good or the most expensive camera in the world, if I don't know how to operate it properly, that camera is going to be worthless. It's going to take pictures and most likely you're going to go into automatic mode and always take pictures or videos like that. Now, when it comes to being a dad, we are born with that. God designed men to be fathers. Not only fathers, but that fatherly figure in the house or, 
your surroundings, throughout your friends. It's that figure that got placed in you that we as men need to develop if we want to have kids or already have kids and we're a little late on the fatherhood thing or we're looking to have children in the future. That doesn't mean that you gotta get and start go get books and get ready. You come with that. When Madison was born, I had no idea what to do. But little by little, I started working on it. And, I, and the more I practiced, the better I became at it. Now, fathers is such a great thing that God designed for us to have in order to give something to someone else that I believe nobody else could give. Now, my dad, I love my dad. My dad is the most hard-working man I know. He's got issues just like every single one of us. But my dad has never stopped working since he was seven years old. In my life, my dad has never um, not given me anything that I want or need in my entire life, even up to the point where I'm married. Um, but being a dad signifies that we are not that we're above a woman because our roles are completely different and the way God designed us to be is different. But the way we, we have to act and react to situations is what matters. Being a father doesn't mean someone that just goes out to work um, or someone that provides financially for the house. A father is a person who gets covering to his house and is willing to do anything to protect them. You know, with Madison being around, my eyes are always and constantly looking out for where she's at. Why? Because I have a role to protect her, to show her the right way, to show her that no matter where she goes or what she does, that is always going to be there to support her. Just like today, we were uh, we bought her a kiddie pool and stuff like that. And she's a year and a half old. So she, naturally, she's playing around and she fell. And she fell into the water. And she started like drinking water. As soon as I picked her up, she knew I'm okay. And that's the same thing that trickles down from heaven, from God to men and to us for our families or the future family that you may want to have one day is God is going to give us that covering and God places us as men to give the same covering to our families. God in his divine wisdom and his greatness made us and engineered us, uh, engineered us to, to be that. To be the people that are going to be there for their family when they need it. Now, there are some dads out there that, you know, they don't do a great job. But if they were willing to do that part, even if they're separated, they can still bring that protection to the family or to the children, which whatever situation people may be in right now, in, in, at that moment. Uh, but God really started with us for that reason. He always said that he was going to be recovering. And the only way that I currently believe, and I think this is the only way I will believe for the rest of my life, that I can be a good dad is by going to the source and going to God. Knowing that if I learn from Him, that's going to come down to me and I'll be able to apply it to my family, to my daughter. You know, um, you learn something when, when, when you get married and when you have children that some things don't matter as much as other things do, such as your family. You know, you work doesn't necessarily mean that that's the most important thing anymore. Your job is just a place where you go so you can provide and have enough funds for whatever your family may need. The more you learn about God, the better you will be at, at guiding your family towards the future, at better at making decisions towards the future, at better at at, 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 at showing um, that you are um, gaining wisdom and understanding to guide your family. God has never stopped showing us His love even though we mess up. And that same thing happens to us. No matter what our kids do, no matter how upset we get, we're always going to love them. So on Father's Day, you know, if you're a dad, I, I encourage you to just go and, and, and spend some time with God and, and, and learn from Him. Make it a habit to learn 
What does the Bible, what does the Word of God say about being a dad? If you're thinking about having kids, hey, no better place, no better place to start than reading His Word. The Bible and the Word of God, I mean the Bible and the Word of God are the same thing, are full of guidance that God shows us about His love and protections towards us. We are men and we were created that way. We were men to be protection for our daughters, for our sons, and for our families. My goal is that my daughter falls in love with me first before she falls in love with another man. That's just the reality. Why? Because I have to teach her what a real man looks like. And if I, whenever I have a boy, and when Jesus' next boy, uh, their next baby will be a boy, um, that he knows what I've learned from God can be transmitted to him and complement what he has, and, and he will learn from God. So, to all of you out there, my friends, if you're a father, congratulations. Hey, be the best father you can be. Think about your kids. Think about your wife. You are such an important part of their lives. If you're a father and you don't live with your kids and you're watching this video, listen, you can do so many good things for them. You don't understand how many good things you can do for them. The fact that you're away from them doesn't mean that that disqualifies you to give that God-given protection and, and, and guidance for them. And for those of you out there who are thinking or are about to become dads, uh, Leo, um, hey, God is going to guide you. Just trust Him. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about diapers. Don't worry about all the things that are going on. Just focus and focus and loving your wife right now, guiding her through this moment. And and when that baby comes, just be as ready as you can be. And that could be not really ready because it, you won't know until your until your baby's born.